Hello. In this video, I wanted to show you how to add colors to the color bar over here on the left. Uh, my mouse is in the upper left hand corner area. So right now I'm, I was just using the uh, default preset for it. And um, usually you probably want to just say safe palette as preset when you do that. Um, it basically would just start, oops, sorry. <laughs> Um, if I click that, yeah, I would just, uh, or you could do it as preset or if it's default, it'll just be the default one. But if you, um, if you save it as a preset, you'll be able to save that and you'll be able to reopen it later in the program. Um, but it's kind of stored in a different area and I always do recommend you back it up locally on, like on your computer if you want to. Um, or like in a folder structure, so like you understand where to uh, get the preset again if you want to load it again into Aspirite. Uh, but the other thing you don't need to worry about is that um, if you if you have a sprite that you already made with colors that you're not exactly sure and you don't want to have to go through the pain points of selecting everything on the uh, on the sprite and adding it to the left over here, you could just do new palette from sprite and it'll take all of the colors um, over here and put them over to the left. So it'll create a new palette out of all of those existing colors from your current sprite. Um, so if you save palette as default, you have all of these colors here. Uh, you probably don't want all of them. Perhaps you want to start from scratch. Uh, what I like to do, I'm basically dragging and selecting all of these colors and I'm just gonna click the after I have them selected. You could do one at a time if you want, want to, but then you just click the delete key and it'll remove it from the palette. Um, but yeah, I'm selecting a bunch of them. And when you do select a bunch of them at once, you start at one and you keep your uh, mouse or pointer on it, you drag it for the ones that you want to get rid of. I have all of those ones selected besides the black color. Then I press the uh, delete key. Great, look, over here we only have the color black. And I could draw, oops, maybe it's gray. Sorry, I may have uh, messed with uh, something before. Oops. Ah. So um, we're on this color, which, yeah, it's black. Okay, great. So now we have these colors here, but now we want to add uh, more colors. So the way you do that is if you go down here um, in this color, uh, other area, this color area, you know, this shows kind of like a gradient from like the brightest color to it being less saturated to uh, black, but you, you have that. You can also change like the hue through uh, this area. And let's say you wanted to add a dark blue color. Well, I'm dragging with my cursor in this area over, I'm in the lower left hand area just to tell you, but um, I'm in this color box thing and I'm dragging to the upper right because I want a dark blue color and um, so you'll see, I basically selected a new color. And uh, if you look right here, there is this red icon with an exclamation point. Um, you know, it says add foreground color to the palette. You click it and look, it's added up here to our uh, color bar palette in the upper left hand side. So now when I select that color and I want to draw on our canvas, it'll draw the blue pixels and uh, you can, continuously like do that for uh, different colors say I wanted the same blue but I wanted it I want to like I want to make it a little bit more see-through well I can do this I have a more see-through blue color now I'm going to click that button that says add foreground color to the palette um, and look it's right here and now I can draw those uh, semi-opaque blue pixels cool right so we have that and we basically learned we can do that. Um, the other important thing is there's a foreground color and there's a background color. Um, you know, they're kind of used for like switching between two colors fast. If you know the specific key combination and do that, you could just select that instead um, if you wanted to. But in general, you probably don't want to mess with the background color here. That's kind of a, uh, well, no, you could if you want to. Forget what I'm saying, but I'm back here again. If you click that, it'll bring up the, uh, more more options for how you may want to work with a given color. Um, I'm going to choose green, and uh, and if you click the color 
bar area right here itself. It'll bring up all these other options. Um, I'm going to touch on HSV in one second, but I want to talk about RGBA. Um, oops. <coughs> so R is red. Um, it's the amount of redness in the pixel for the pixels. Green is the amount of greenness, and blue is the amount of blue. Uh, when you're looking at pixels on a computer screen, you're looking at some combination of these uh, values. Basically, all the reds go from 0 to 255, the greens go from 0 to 255, and the blue goes from 0 to 255. If I had RGB all set to 0, um, that would be lack of color, so it would be black pixels. And if you have all of them set to 255, it would be white because that is all of the pixels, I believe. Um, and you may be wondering about the alpha channel or alpha. So al alpha channel is usually used for setting, like making a uh, transparent background, like no background at all. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of like it may be referred to as an al alpha channel or alpha color. Um, say from a programmatic standpoint, if you didn't want any background to show up at all when you export your thing, your uh, drawing or whatever, your pixel art, you would set that alpha channel to a specific color. Uh, in general, I would always uh, reserve the color white, like pure white, 255, 255, 255, RGBA 255. Um, um, I would set that color to be the color that doesn't show up because in general when you have um, some application uh, Say a video game for instance uh, You you specify some color to never show up in the game. So you may be wondering um, You know, what do you do? What if you want the white color in your game? Well, you could just choose a different shade of white like maybe a little bit of a color of like off-white rather than uh, that specific white color. So the other white colors will show up in the game, but uh, you know the most white color would not show up. So it's kind of like that. It's a bit weird to think of um, from a web development point of view, which is something I've done a lot of. I would mostly like to deal with um, RGB colors. I just liked it for organizational purposes. So. You also have a uh, hue saturation and value, and that was uh, what I wrote on the screen over here. So the interesting thing about that is uh, instead of going over here, like instead of having to deal with this hue shifting thing here, this gradient thing here, and this uh, opacity bar here, you could also modify um, the color by like click, you click that box thing that has the color in it that you're working with. And I, uh, you, you know, you go to the second tab here and uh, yeah, you could, modify it in different ways probably doing it this way you could have a bit more control i have a green color right now and right now it's highly saturated and you know saturation has to do with the amount of brightness as i wrote on the screen um if you want to make it a little less saturated you can do that um i also realized i kind of made it opaque so uh but yeah so you can make it you can make the color more saturated you can make it less saturated um the other thing we have here is uh, value. You know, value has to do with the amount of darkness in the uh, pixel. It, it's it's. I think it's a bit more intuitive to deal with um, hue saturation and value. Um, other programs may refer to it in a different way, but uh, yeah, I think dealing it this way could be a bit more helpful. And you could see here um, the colors. That are showing. I'm trying to think what the left one means as opposed to the right one, um, but yeah. But um, you know, in short, if I want it really saturated, or, and I want maybe want it a little darker to get like a cool, a nice pine tree green color, uh, you could do that. So we have our color, and I'm going to add it by clicking that red box to the area up here. And now we have that color, and now we could draw with it. Um, so yeah, there's a lot that you can mess with when it comes to color. Um, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of color theory, but you know, there are all these other, um, options, you know, there's value. I, I, I know this means hue, saturation, and lightness. I can't remember what the, probably the lightness just means light. <laughs> I can't remember the exact reason for it. Um, there's also an option for working in a grayscale if you so 
would choose. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of options and probably your best bet is dealing with uh, hue saturation and value, I believe, for uh, you know working with different types of uh, pixel art and whatnot or whatever art that you want to make in Asprite. Um, but yeah, I hope this video helps you out. I've been thinking about this for quite a while. There's a lot that I don't know about um, dealing with color itself, but it's something that I wanted to uh, work on, try to explain. I was happy that I was also able to explain this thing to, to the left. Um, I guess the other thing you can do if you save the palette, um, I always talk about organizing your work and saving your palettes in specific ways. Uh, I think there may be other file formats too, but if you save, if you save this uh, color thing, like we made that color palette to the uh, left, and let's say we want to uh, save it. I'm just gonna call it test colors, and I'm saving it in this uh, folder I named assets for Sprite uh, 001. Um, the .hex file will allow us to reopen the color palette that we made in Asprite. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I'm just gonna save it and look, it's saved, right? Okay, I'm gonna close this program and uh, I'm not gonna save it. So you're gonna see what I mean in uh, just a second. Uh, let me open Asprite. I'm gonna make a new file. I don't know why it keeps going to those colors. Okay, so look, we are back uh, with a new file because I didn't save it before. And uh, look, we have the old palette here. This is like the default one when you open it in uh, Asperite. Um, now what I want to do is I'm gonna say uh, load palette. And here we're gonna select that, uh, the file that we saved before, it's a .hex file. Pretty sure .hex stands for hexadecimal. Um, I'm gonna open it. And look, it opened up the color palette we had before. Uh, I don't remember saving two blues. Maybe I did and I totally forgot, but um, the important thing to note is that you can back up your color palettes if you do want to, but it may be easier for you to just uh, save your sprites in a form of like iterations in a file structure. And when I say file structure, I just mean like you create a folder on your computer called assets, so to say, and you like, uh, you know, you keep your files organized like sprite 001, you know, something like that. And you save the next version you make is iteration two, iteration three. And if you ever did want to like open those, um, if you open an Asprite, it will basically, uh, you, there's, like I said before, there's an option that you can click that will uh, take all of the colors from your Sprite and put it into the color bar over here to the left. I guess the last thing that I wanted to end with is that um, if you look at the documentation, which I always do recommend you do, on their website. Uh, there's more information about dealing with the color bar. There's a lot of options here. I'm not gonna be able to cover everything off the top of my head here through it. I mean, I guess you'll never know all of it because there's just uh, so much to know, but it is really cool. And um, yeah, I think maybe if you're making larger color palettes to do a wide variety of work, it would be more worthwhile to save it. Like maybe you have like a certain theme that you wanna stick to or say you make a color palette and you want every pixel artist in your uh, team to be using these same colors, it can be a good idea, like make that .hex file of the saved color bar palette that you made and then you could share it with everyone so that you can uh, keep everyone organized and keep the theme of the game or whatever you wanna make, video game, etc., the same. But yeah, I hope this video helps. If you like my channel, please subscribe. If you like my videos, please like it. And if you have a question, please ask in the comments. Uh, thank you for listening. Bye.